So I'm in part A, and we're gonna start out with active range of motion for flexion. So if you can bring your hand to your shoulder. Perfect. So now I'm gonna line up the fulcrum on the lateral epicondyle. And the stationary arm is gonna be in line with the chromium process, and the movement arm is gonna be lined up with the radial styloid. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and flex. So you're supposed to have 145 to 155, and he has 146, so he's in a good range. Uh, next, we're gonna have supination, so if you can sit. Or have them hold something like a pencil. Okay, and if you could rotate your hand, think you're holding the bowl of soup, great. And go back. So now we're gonna line up the fulcrum with the Third metacarpal, Station, uh, stationary arm is going to be perpendicular to the ground, and he's going to rotate his hand again. Now I'm lining up the movement arm with the second metacarpal. Okay. So it's, he's at 90 exactly, and you're supposed to be at 90. So next we have passive range of motion for extension. So I'm going to hold his elbow, and we're going to extend. This is going to be a hard feeling because of the olecranon process sitting in the olecranon fossa. Next we have supination. So I'm going to hold his elbow and I'm going to rotate his wrist or his forearm like so. Um, so he's going to be firm due to the stretch of the radial ulnar ligament and the interosseous membrane. So next we have manual muscle for flexion. So I'm gonna have you in a supinated. So I'm gonna start this way and I'm gonna hold his elbow and going to resist. That gives that a five out of five and that's testing the biceps brachii. We're gonna go neutral, do the same thing. That's testing the brachioradialis and then perm. And do the same thing. And that's testing the brachialis. And I give those all five out of five. Next is supination. So I'm gonna hold his elbow, I'm gonna hold at the wrist, and he's going to resist. Perfect. I give that a five out of five. And that's testing the biceps brachii and the supinator muscle. So now we're going on to special testing. We have valgus stress test. So I'm going to hold at the elbow, and his elbow is going to be bent slightly. I'm going to hold at his wrist, and then I'm going to push laterally. Like so, and this is testing the UCL. Uh, it'll be positive if there's an increased laxity bilaterally or pain. This is an implication of a sprained UCL. Next, we have posterior lateral rotary instability. So I'm going to have you lay down, please. Great. Okay, so he's going to be 90-90, and I'm going to, with my left hand, put an axial load, and with this hand, I'm going to put a valgus stress on it, and we're going to go up into extension. Okay, it'll be positive if this sublux and goes back with flexion, that'll be a positive test, and that indicates chronic elbow instability. Now we have posing signs. So you can go ahead and sit. So I'm going to be holding on his elbow, and he's going to make a fist for me. And he's going to resist upward against my hand. A uh, positive test would be any sudden pain that he feels up into his forearm, and that will indicate a lateral epicondyle um, epicondyloitis, and he'll have pain kind of shooting up into this area. Uh, golfer's elbow is the next one. So I'm going to have him um, extend his wrist and extend his fingers. And I'm gonna hold out the elbow and I'm going to apply uh, pressure onto his hand and he's gonna try to extend his elbow. Like so uh, if he has any pain in the medial epicondyle, then, or like pain at the wrist with the flexor pronators and where they attach on the medial epicondyle, 
that is an indication of medial epicondylitis. Next, we have elbow flexion test. So I'm going to ask him to flex his elbows and put his hand, his wrist flexed as well, and his fingers flexed, like so, and he's gonna uh, hold this for three to five minutes. And if he has any tingling or paresthesia with this in his forearm or the two to three digits areas, then that is a positive uh, test, which implicates uh, cupital tunnel syndrome or uh, ulnar nerve compression.